I have already created a blank document, the same way we created the blank documents in the previous tutorial. But now what I will show you is how to save this blank document. If you go to file, and then you click save as, a new pop-up window, save drawings, will come up. Basically, select the folder where you would like to save your work, give it a name, give it a name, square, and just click on save. Now we have saved our blank document, and you can see that by this bit here. As you remember in the first tutorial, we have mentioned that once you have saved your document, the full address of your document will appear here, as it does. So basically, I have created a blank document. I have chosen to custom size this document to 100 by 100 millimeters. Alright, now that we have created and saved our new blank document, there's probably one more step that I would do before I actually start drawing some shapes. I've already done this, but I will show you how to do it. Go to the Windows menu, click on it, and then go to Dockers. Then move right and select the top two, the Object Properties and the Object Manager. Those dockers are actually located here. By clicking on a particular docker you will expand it. So for example let's click on Object Properties and we get the properties of that object. To collapse it, just click here. Same applies for the Object Manager. Now the Object Manager is something you're gonna be using a lot if you're having multiple layers or multiple pages. For now we only got one page, we've got only one layer, and we got absolutely nothing of that layer. So we'll leave it for now. Click here and collapse it. If we go to the object properties, basically the information that was displayed in the properties bar here is now displayed here. Plus a lot more options and properties as you will see. Alright, let's go to our tools and let's select a rectangular tool. Now as you probably already realized, every time you move over an icon, there's going to be some description about that icon. But also it will show a shortcut. So for example, if you want to select the rectangular tool, you can just press F6 on your keyboard or click here like I've done. Now our tool has been selected. To draw a rectangular or a square in this case, click once, drag it. Let go. That's it. We have created our first basic shape. Now, one very important thing that a lot of people forget to do is once you have done using your particular tool, you will have to go up here and change to pick tool. Otherwise, every time you click anywhere in your document, you're basically basically creating a new square, which we do not want to do. Now, to undo this because I don't want it here. I can simply go here and click undo, which I'll do once, and then I'll do Control Z for the other two. Now we have our square on our screen, now we have to go and pick pick tool. Okay, another way of doing this in a shorter way is just pressing space key on your keyboard. Okay, now we have a pick tool. If we if we click once on our square, we'll find some information here in the properties bar. But a lot more information will be found in objects, in object properties. Click on it, and here we can find many different things actually. We can set up our outline. So for example, if we don't want any outline, we'll click none. Or otherwise we can set the width of our outline. Once again, we're working in millimeters, you can change that as you wish. We can change the color as well, so let's change it, let's change it to some blue color. Also the style, there are many different available styles, there's a dashed line, dotted line and so on. We'll go with a straight normal line. So let's also make it, let's make it a lot bigger, let's go 2 millimeters. Now if you go down the list a bit more, 
so we can actually so we can actually collapse this and we can go to fill section so what this will do is that it will fill your shape so if you click on for example uniform fill you will get a palette of colors so you can choose some color you want say some yellowish make it yellow and there it is we have changed our fill color we have changed the color and the width of our outline but now we'd like to go back to the outline and show you a few other things this here actually represents the corners of your shape so if you have a look our square currently has a very sharp 90 degrees angle we can change that and make it a bit round or we can choose the other option and make it a bit almost like cut off so let's go with round for now so what we have done so far is that we have created a basic shape our shape is well something that looks a bit like square it's not a perfect square we have also changed some properties of this square we have changed the thickness and the color of our outline and we have filled this shape with a different color but another way of doing this a quicker way would be to use the color palette located right here so for example if I use my left mouse button and click on this red color my fill would change to red right however if I use my right mouse button and click on some other color green the color of my outline will change so once again to change the basic properties of a basic object you can either use object properties docker or you can use the color palette also you can change some of the properties of this particular basic shape by looking at the property bar up here so let's have a look what's here if you have a look at the top left corner you will find an object origin icon so basically what this icon does is that it lets you select where the origin of your object will be in this case our shape which is a square so this origin will later be used as a reference point for your object so let's put it let's put it in the center for now the next bit of information gives you the exact point of your origin so at this particular point our origin is located as almost 51 millimeters in the x direction and 454 in the y direction the next bunch of numbers actually give you the size of your object so you can see that my size is 76 millimeters by 58 if you move to the right you will come to this little icon here which is a lock ratio what this actually means is that once you click it when you try to resize your shape it will always resize it proportionally in the x and the y direction so let's unclick it and go to the next one this here represents the rotation currently our rotation is 180 degrees let's put it to zero which which pretty much didn't do anything because we're working with the square at the moment but if we go 90 we can see some changes now the next two items are pretty useless for this particular object because it's a square what they do actually is they mirror the image horizontally and vertically so I will not apply those two at the moment the next three items however is something that we have already seen so it deals with the corners we can create the right cor round corners which we have at the moment or we can change them to something else as for the rest of the settings I will not go into more details for now to conclude this first video tutorial on basic shapes, I will perform a few more things to our little square here. First thing I would like to do is to make sure that our square is placed right in the center of our document. 
So to do this, make sure we have picked the pick tool, click on our square, which I've already done, and then just press letter P on your keyboard. This will actually position the shape you have selected right in the middle. To check this, we can go to our properties bar and see that our object origins has been selected in the middle, in the center, and that it's located 50 millimeters in the X and 50 millimeters in the Y direction. So basically our shape, our square is perfectly placed on this document. Another thing that I would like to do is to change the size. So let's make it 60 tab by 60. Now we have a better looking square. It's 60 millimeters high and 60 millimeters wide. Although that in this tutorial we haven't really created something that looks amazing, but we have actually worked with some of the properties of some basic shapes and how to change them. This will come very handy later when you start working with more advanced and better looking images and artwork.